Mediacom Stadium, the host side for today's matchup as the Polar Bears host your Marshalltown Bobcats. Girls soccer on KFJB TV. We are so great to have you tuned in here this evening as both teams off to a good start in the 2024 campaign. The Bobcats are 2 and 1. The Polar Bears off to a 1 0 start with a 10 0 victory to begin their season. We are happy to announce that, of course, 10 matches coming up this spring with Bobcats soccer as this the first. First of 10 and on the road tonight at Mediacom Stadium in the Des Moines Metro. As you look, both teams getting warmed up for our matchup here tonight. We'll talk to Stacy Galima. She's the head coach for Marshalltown Girls Soccer. We'll talk with her next on our countdown to kickoff. It's match night here on KFJB TV. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Welcome back into our countdown to kickoff. It's our match day here on KFJB TV. It's the Polar Bears hosting the Bobcats. Stacy Galema, girls soccer coach with us before this match here tonight against North. North is 1-0 on the season. They scored 10 goals in their first game of the year as uh, they took on Sheraton. They got a win. What do you make out of this North team coming into this matchup tonight? Uh, they have definitely a young group that is, I think, eager kind of, kind of prove themselves. And, you know, anytime you can start 10-0 to, to start your season is always a good thing. So I think they're excited. And, you know, opening up their, their stadium, I think that just adds to their excitement for them. Uh, Medina and goal tonight for North. She did not allow a goal. What what do you make on that kind of the defensive side of things? Yeah, I think they're going to make it challenging. Um, we got to take advantage of our opportunities and kind of send in some dangerous balls to kind of test her early and, and see how she can move, how, she, how her hands are, things like that. As The earlier we can do that in the game, the better. Two and one on the start to the season. You were on the road, Gladbrook Rhinebeck last night. A, a chilly, cold, rainy one. You're you're without the rain here tonight, luckily, but uh, not without the wind. How much do the early season games with the weather such a factor kind of play into a little bit of your coaching style and how maybe you kind of uh, go into a game and prepare? Yeah, your warm up is definitely different. Uh, making sure you don't want to pull anything. Um, obviously, with the with the cold and and stuff, you got to be ready to go. Same with like our subs when they get ready to go in, they got to make sure that they're ready. So um, when they're in the field, you know they're they're ready to go 100. Um, percent That's where we started a little bit slow last night. So hopefully today is a much better start. This is a young team for you. You mentioned it for North, a young team, but also a very young team for yourself. You had a lot of freshmen and sophomore playing last year. Now they're a year older. How much does that experience play into coming into tonight's game? Uh, hopefully huge for us. Um, they play together a lot. Um, a lot of them have a lot of varsity minutes, so it's, it's a great opportunity for them to show you know what they've worked on, how, how we've progressed even from last season to now. Um, they've shown glimpses of it already this season, but hopefully a good showing tonight and continue to build. 7-10 and ten a year ago, and you, of course I know you want to continue to keep <laughs> building that. Uh, how do you feel about you know overall this season heading in uh, in the Iowa Lions Conference, second season of, of being in there and, and really good competition that's kind of of your level? Yeah, um, uh, definitely a lot of different styles of play in our conference, so it'll be interesting to see how we adjust as the season goes along. Um, there's definitely some powerhouses as far as you know, like Ames and Mason City will always be tough, um, but hopefully we can have a good showing against them this, this season and, and kind of show them what we're able to do at the same time you must have been watching a lot of basketball in the offseason because you were watching uh, you know players like Georgia Jansen and play, on your back defensive line it seems like on that defensive line you've got some good senior leadership and also some of your taller players back there <laughs> yeah it just kind of worked out that way um, we always encourage our girls to you know play as many sports as they can uh, it's good to you know stay in shape work on different body you know d different muscle groups um, and then you know it just builds team camaraderie from from start to finish so it's, it's really great to see them you know find success on, in all areas yeah and talk about your your forwards um you know mckenna coleman is back a year ago she had five goals uh, has she taken a step forward yeah uh, mckenna is involved in a lot more plays for us uh she's a lot more active she's winning the ball she wants the ball at her feet i think last year she kind of rushed things a little bit but this year she's been a lot more calm she's willing to dribble take people on 1v1 um, so it, it's created a lot of opportunities for her and for her teammates because she's able to draw on the defense a little bit more uh individually 
Well, we are excited uh, branching out with 10 soccer matches on KFJB TV. Uh, looking forward to it this spring, our first one of the season so far. Good luck tonight, right. Iowa Lions Conference battle. Thank you very much. All right, Stacey Galima, <laughs> head coach for the girls. We'll check out the starting 11 for both squads when we come back right here on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Well, it's match night at Alba Family Field at Mediacom Stadium on the Drake campus. A little cold and breezy today. At least it's not raining anymore. 46 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at 13 and gusting even higher tonight. That will definitely be a battle for both of these squads here at Mediacom Stadium. Let's check out tonight's starting matchup and lineups for both of these squads. First off for the North Polar Bears with our starting lineups all brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting 11. For the Des Moines North Polar Bears at Ford, Haley Weinheimer, just a freshman, three goals in that opening matchup with Sheraton in a 10-0 victory for the North Polar Bears. She is a freshman Ford. She'll be up there on that front line. Meanwhile, Adar Mangok, three goals and an assist. She had seven goals and six assists a year ago. She is now a senior at the forward position. The mid line, you look there, Gonzalez, Pa, McCarl, and 4-4. And then on the defensive end, Gerardo, Espinosa, Sala, Neighbor, and in goal tonight, number uh, 33, Brisa Medina. Four saves. She played 80 minutes the other night. She's just a freshman goalkeeper. She'll get the start tonight as against Sheridan. I mentioned she had those four saves. Lisa Grief, the head coach for the Des Moines North Polar Bears, 1-0 to begin the season. On the other side of things for your Marshalltown Bobcats, they are 2-1. Head coach Stacy Galima as the Bobcats up front here tonight. Alexia Garcia and McKenna Coleman. So far on the season for Alexia Garcia and the Bobcats. One goal to her name. The senior is a forward on that front line to go along with the other senior, or excuse me, junior in McKenna Coleman, the upperclassman. A lot of younger classmen on this squad for the Bobcats. You look at the midfield. Buen Rosato for the Bobcats. Carol Gomez Reyes, Yuri Ramirez. We had her on Bobcat Live uh, a few weeks back. A goal so far on the season. Last year, she had four goals to her name, a junior for the Bobcats. Also, Kenya Gomez Reyes. Last year, she scored eight goals. And she is a junior midfielder. On the defensive end of things for the Marshalltown Bobcats, number 12, Georgia Jansen, a sophomore defender, Aubrey Tejada, Sarah Huffman, and Deanna Hernandez on the back line for the Bobcats. They'll try to help out their keeper on a very breezy night tonight. Esme Chavez, three goals allowed on the season, nine saves, a senior goalkeeper. Getting a little bit of playing time the other night against uh, Gladbrook Rhinebeck last night. Uh, picking up a few minutes in the second half, 24 minutes played. Sofia Valdez, she did not allow a goal, and she did pick up three saves last night against Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Bobcats, 2-1 and one on the season. couple of victories this year against Newton and Central Iowa United, 3-1 and 4 nothing. So a couple of uh, a clean sheet right there in that first game against the Newton Cardinals for the Marshalltown Bobcats. Kickoff between the Bobcats and the Polar Bears coming up, and next we will get you our keys to the match here at Mediacom Stadium. Polar Bears, Bobcats coming up on KFJB TV.
Back at Mediacom Stadium, Brandon Lewis with you tonight on KFJB-TV. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Get upcoming game alerts to Bobcat events, including on Friday night. We'll be at home at Leonard Cole Field as the boys getting uh, acclimated to the new turf at Leonard Cole Field. They'll take on the Fort Dodge Dodgers as pregame coverage starts at 7.15 as the match start is on slate at 7.30 on Friday nights. Our next girls matchup will come at Litter Cole Field on Monday night against the Cedar Falls Tigers as they'll be in town to face off against your Marshalltown Bobcats. Let's get tonight's starting uh, or keys to the match for the Bobcats. Go for goal tonight. Got to put some shots on goal here tonight because uh, Brisa Medina, pretty good uh season for her. We'll talk about her in just a moment, but uh, this is a team that uh, if they can continue to attack, just like the JV just did, uh, they won 8 to nothing against Des Moines North. We'll see if they can put as many shots on goal here tonight, especially in breezy, chilly conditions. It's got to be a, a hot start here tonight for the Bobcats to get their third victory of the season. Their first Iowa Lions conference matchup of the young season as well here in the 2023, or excuse me, 24 campaign. Last year in 2023, the Bobcats were 7 and 10 a year ago. The Polar Bears, they were 10 and 5 last year. And a first year goalkeeper is our key to, to the match here tonight. How well does she handle the pressure? Funky Cold Medina. Uh, it, the ball's going to probably take some funky uh, lanes with the wind out here. It's cold. you got to battle that. So Medina has got to be good in goal here tonight for the North Polar Bears. Of course, she had a clean sheet against Sheraton. Uh, she had four saves, did not allow a goal in that one. And we'll see how the freshman performs tonight here at Mediacom Stadium. Both teams getting uh, their final preparations and starting lineups here at Mediacom Stadium. As kickoff between the Polar Bears and the Bobcats coming up next, right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn's Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Cat Match Day on KFJB TV. Brandon Lewis with you. Our producer tonight is the one and only Todd Steinkamp. Jesse DeMeyer as well as Keith Stewart on camera. Let's join with player introductions for tonight's matchup between the Bobcats and the Polar Bears here at Mediacom Stadium. Thank <laughs> you. 
40 minutes on the clock. The Bobcats in their road. Whites, blue lettering on those. Meanwhile, the Des Moines North Polar Bears, their alternate uniforms tonight, the pink with white numbers. The assistant referees taking position here tonight. Yes. Yes. Final look over the field. Looks good to go as the starting 11 will go out of the field for the Des Moines North Polar Bears. As again, the freshman, Barisa Medina, goalkeeper, will head back in goal for the Polar Bears tonight. And onto the field as May Chavez, number one there in the alternate uniform for the Bobcats in goal, the senior. And as kickoff here tonight on KFJB-TV, Brandon Lewis with you here at BDCom Stadium. Bobcats will... Kickoff to begin our match here tonight at Mediacom Stadium. Wind blowing pretty good from north to south, so the Bobcats will be going in to the attacking zone and striking into the wind, so that wind behind their back in the second half, that will be key, especially if they find themselves down by a goal. As we are underway, 40 minutes to go in this first half of action. Coleman... And the ball play misplayed a little bit right there. The Bobcats will gather back in a crosser to the near side. Buen Rosotro. And she tries to win it back as she lost it there. Be a free kick awarded as the Polar Bears will take that one quickly. 
And the referee tried to slow him down to re-kick out the free kick. Everyone set, and the Bobcats win the turnover right there. They'll play it towards midfield. Giving a good run at it, Alexia Garcia. Now McKenna Coleman on the near side. That one out on the sideline. I believe that will be with the Polar Bears. Forty-six degrees at kickoff tonight at Mediacom Stadium. In that wind out of the north at fifteen, but gusting definitely higher. We saw gusts of thirty miles per hour today. Up towards midfield, cut off by Deanna Hernandez Carranza. And the Bobcats in the attacking zone. Garcia with a play on the far side. Across her towards Coleman. Coleman not able to play that one. And North is going to have that one on the end line. That'll be a goal kick. So Medina will be the one to free kick this one away. Yeah, it's just two minutes gone. Garcia with the ball in the middle of the field right there, deflected to Gomez Reyes. And they take a shot from way out, and that'll be a goal kick. And she'll let 4 4 take the, the kick. Cut off by the Bobcats. That one by Coleman. She's in the middle, and it's behind her. Sneaks all the way to the other side of the box. And finally, the Polar Bears will clear it out of there. But a good play. Cut off. Sydney Capayu. She has checked into this match. She, she, she cut off that pass. Now on the back line, the Bobcats win it back. Hernandez Carranza. On that yellow line, but did not go out. Yuri Ramirez plays it up. McKenna Coleman looking to the far side. She'll cross over and has ball taken away. North gets it out. The Bobcats with Capayu getting it right back in. Played to the corner. Across her towards the middle. North plays it back out to the near side. And Capayu now wins it back. And that'll be out on the Polar Bears. A throw in. Just outside the box, Yuri Ramirez, crosser, and... It will be ruled a goal right there. Yuri Ramirez with a crosser, and it goes in for the Bobcats. And the Cats strike for the first goal of the game, one to nothing. On the road here tonight at Mediacom Stadium, Bobcats looking for their first conference win of the season. And here we go, Yuri Ramirez crosser, and I think maybe a little bit of the wind helping out just sailed that one over Medina. And Yuri Ramirez with her second goal of the season at 36 minutes to go here in the opening half. Marshalltown goal in the fourth minute. Number two, Yuri Ramirez. Score Marshalltown one, North Mill. So the Bobcats with a 1-0 lead. Tejada will poke that one out on the near sideline. Throw in for the Polar Bears. Stacy Galima obviously, obviously has to be elated with the start of this one here. Throw in will come up a little bit short. Bobcats almost able to pick that one off. I'm a little bit shocked. It does not look like the lights have been turned on here. 
Maybe they have, but not really taking full effect as uh, still another 15 minutes or so until sunset tonight, but that has not stopped the Bobcats taking that, taking that one nothing lead. Throw in again from the near side. Gerardo, the junior, will play in, and the Bobcats win it back. And Rostro had it, lost it, and now cleared out of there by the senior and Sarah Huffman, who's on that back defensive line in the middle, middle defender. McKenna Coleman going to run up. She'll get a pass from Alexia Garcia back to Garcia. Garcia's going to try to go track it down, but that, that's McCullman. Excuse me, it was uh, Kenya Gomez-Reyes with that pass up. Polar Bears play it into the zone. And Bobcats will clear it out. It'll go out on the far side. And Sarah Huffman again tracked that one down. Do have a substitution as Natasha Smith will check out of this or check into this match as Gerardo. Estefani Gerardo, a junior defense, will check out. Tejada plays the throw in. And the Bobcats win back. Possession of the ball, and we do have a penalty on the Polar Bears, so a free kick from that spot. Huffman takes the free kick. And it deflects off a polar bear on the far side, so throw in Bobcats. Yuri Ramirez trying to look over the middle, but nothing there cut off by the polar bears. Played up the far side. That one will stay in. And out on the Polar Bears, the throw-in. Alexia Garcia will take the throw-in. Quickly played. Gomez Reyes turns. Looking for Coleman, but cut off. Capeu's there on the backside, though. And she'll win it back. Benrostro. Up to Coleman, a little bit too far of Coleman. Keeper comes out and will play it outside the box. As the Polar Bears got it close right there as Coleman was charging. Upcats almost cut off the attack, and now Yuri Ramirez did have it for a second. But the freshman Weinheimer got it back, plays it in deeper into the Bobcat zone, and the Bobcats will just push it. Out on the end line. That'll be a corner kick from the far side for the Polar Bears. Looks like December Paw. Two goals on the season for her in that opening matchup for the Polar Bears against Sheraton. Paw will take the corner. Hung up there in the air. As that kick right into the wind. And the Bobcats come away with it. In the middle, one by Yuri Ramirez. Played up to Coleman, but cut off by the Polar Bears. Capeu will stick with this one. Plays it to the outside. Coleman was cut off. And the Bobcats get a positive deflection right there. Alexi Garcia. Kara Gomez-Reyes fighting through a couple of polar bears. Up to Coleman and cut off. Gomez-Reyes loses the battle against December Paw. Paw up the far side but cut off. Bobcats, Hernandez Garanza. She'll play it out on the far side and a throw in. It looks like we do have a substitution for the Bobcats. 
Giselle Rivera is going to check into the match. She'll replace Cyrus Buenrosotro. So Buenrostro has been uh, very involved early on tonight as she will catch a breather on a very breezy night here at Mediacom Stadium. Throw in on the far side, crossed over to the outside of the box. And just outside the penalty box, the Bobcats will push it out. Coleman to the far side, tracking his Reyes. A good move to slip a defender right there and plays it up to Coleman. Coleman, a nice one touch. Gets it to Garcia. Garcia cut off from behind. A good attack, finding some good lanes to pass, but. Polar Bears on that defensive line were able to cut off. And now a counterattack. Bobcats almost misplaying it right there. Takes a bounce off of Capeyu, but a nice job by Tejada, the senior, to cut off the attack. And now Capeyu will have it. And it's played out of there by Huffman. Near side throw in for the Polar Bears. Rowan is going to be kicked on the end line. I think that's not quite a corner, but it's nearly into that corner. And yes, it will be a corner, actually. And December Paw will be taking this corner kick. All the flex off of Capeyu. And then off of, I believe that was Haley Weinheimer in the middle there. And the kick by Chavez is away up towards midfield. Sanchez plays. Back to Yuri Ramirez. She's back to Sanchez. And Sanchez tripped up but wins the ball back, plays it into the penalty area. She's going to take a shot on goal just high over the crossbar. And that will be a kick. Well, Medina bailed out right there. McKenna Coleman was tracking on the near side. Did not quite have a passing lane right there. But Sanchez with a good play to get a shot on goal. Yeah, and Coleman was uh, doubled up right there defensively. But the Bobcats looking to take advantage with a 1-0 lead. And Coleman on the goal kick takes it away. A shot from way out. Shot put on goal, stopped by Medina as a shot taken there by Carol Gomez-Reyes, the senior with two goals on the season. Ball back to the defensive line, and Tejada will play it out on the near side. Good defensive play. Well, a very well-executed first half. Defensive line has been pretty good for the Bobcats. No real threats for Esme Chavez tonight on goal for the Bobcats. Get a good look there at Sydney Capeyu. She'll take the throw in. A shot on goal, speaking of it, and that one will be taken. And just outside goal, that is going to be 1-1, tying it up here tonight as the Polar Bears strike from way out. As scoring the goal, her second, or excuse me, third goal of the season is Haley McCarl. See the pass there to McCarl. And a nice one touch and able to fire that one in. So her third goal of the season ties it up at one apiece between the Bobcats and the Polar Bears. So the Bobcats were able to strike just four minutes into this contest. 
And now 15 minutes into it, Polar Bears tied back up at 1-1. This one out on the end line. And that is going to be a goal kick. Last touch by the Bobcats. Actually, no, it is going to be a corner kick. I thought the, I thought the Polar Bears pushed that one out on the end line, and so it is going to be a corner kick on the far side for the Bobcats as Kenya Gomez-Reyes, the junior, will take it. Maybe she can pick up her second assist of the season right here. Coleman out to Yuri Ramirez. Her shot is deflected. She's going to try to go back and track that one down. Dahada, a little bit of a misplay. That's going to go all the way onto the other side of the field as Georgia Jansen tracks it down. Cut off by the Polar Bears. Play back towards the mid. Polar Bears getting a little deeper into Bobcat territory as we've inched our way along in this one. And Chavez with a nice save, and she'll run this out. And a kick up to midfield. McKenna Coleman will track it. Good play to Rivera. And Rivera will get past the Polar Bear. Now tries to cross it back towards the middle. And the Polar Bears will cut it off. But now Capayu. And it's deflected off the Polar Bears. Rivera with the throw in. Giselle Hernandez is going to check into the match as well as Millie Heitman for the Bobcats. Kenya Gomez-Reyes will check out. As well as Alexia Garcia for the Bobcats. So still 23 minutes to go until halftime. And we're tied 1-1 apiece between the Polar Bears and the Bobcats. December Paw. Had it taken away. Yuri Ramirez will attack a little one-on-three. Deflection. Coleman gets it to Heitman. An extra pass. A shot on goal. Slips it through. And a goal right there for Giselle Hernandez. Just checking in a moment ago. Strikes back for the Bobcats. 2-1. How about that? You check in and get your... First goal of the season right there. Last year, she scored three goals, and this one her first of the season to make it 2-1 to one here in Albaugh Family Field at Mediacom Stadium. So the Bombcats back up 2-1 to one as Hernandez has it. Millie Heitman played it to her, but taken away by the Polar Bears and out on the side. Heitman to throw in. She'll find Coleman. Coleman has it tapped away, but gathers it back. Pushed off. And the Polar Bears have it back, but Heitman cuts it off. Yuri Ramirez plays it into the box, but that one's going to be out on the end line, a goal kick. Sydney Capayu is going to check out of the match. Deanna Hernandez Carranza, who got the start tonight, she will be back into the match for the Bobcats. At the high school level, unlimited substitutions, really. So, not like at the professional levels where you only can have three total subs in the match. A kick towards goal by Hernandez, who just scored that last goal. And it looks like a penalty and a free kick going to be awarded here for the Polar Bears.
And Yuri Hernandez, or excuse me, uh, Ramirez immediately cut that one off. George Jansen on the back line. Got a pass up by the Polar Bears. Yeah, Sarah Huffman just passed that one up to Millie Heitman. Now Yuri Ramirez towards Coleman. Coleman stops, looking to pass. Gives it to the trailer and Gomez Reyes and cut off. But Yuri Ramirez wins it back. McKenna Coleman going to the far side. A shot, but that one's going to be off the mark and picked up by Medina. Medina walking this one out towards the edge of the penalty before the drop kick. Millie Heitman tracks it down, and she'll stop it before it goes on the sideline, but couldn't quite gather it before it did go out of play, so a throw-in for the Polar Bears. Battling it out on the far sideline. That throw-in is going to be kicked out by Sarah Huffman. Hubcats momentarily one back possession, but Heitman's kick off the mark and a ball into the box is running out. As may Chavez. Chavez. Looking to the far side, but she had a couple of Bobcat ladies to the near side that were wide open, and she'll go towards midfield. Cut up by the Polar Bears. Vic Lamagna tried for a pass on the far side, but not able to get it as December Paw loses. Bobcat's back with it. Stolen away. And Georgia Jansen says she's had enough and kicks it back out towards midfield. Ooh, a big collision right there as Haley Weidheimer ends up on the turf. And she collided with a brick wall in Deanna Hernandez. Carranza, the senior defense. I don't think that's going to be a card of any nature. Just kind of incidental contact right there, but I think they're going to have a substitution. The official wants to make sure that Haley Weinheimer is all right. She's going to check out of the match and get looked at by the trainers on the sideline as Haley McCarl, who scored a goal at uh, 15 minutes into this match. She'll check back in. December Paw will take the kick. Back into the match, Alexia Garcia for the Bobcats. McKenna Coleman has not had a breather so far, and she will check out. She's played 22 minutes here tonight uh, to start this one off. The free kick by Paw is met by Chavez, the keeper. And she'll take the drop kick. Looking towards midfield as December Paw cuts that one off, stops it. And Sarah Huffman played it. Yuri Ramirez launches it back into the attacking zone. And misplayed, and taking advantage of it is Alexia Garcia. Garcia from the wing, back towards the middle. Now the Bobcats get it into the penalty box. But the defensive line able to push it out of there. Millie Heitman almost trying to get it. Yuri Ramirez has it. Plays it over to Millie Heitman. On the right wing. He's looking for a crosser. And the crosser is deflected. 
That ball deflected as Gomez Reyes back towards the middle. And North will come away with it. But Carranza plays it back into the attacking zone. A touch by Gomez Reyes. Back towards the middle. An opening. Hernandez and offside. Hernandez looking for her second goal of the night. And the Bobcats a little overzealous right there in that opportunity. And it will be a free kick for the Polar Bears. Rivera lost it for the Bobcats. Huffman gathers it back. Good aggressive play by Alexia Garcia. Plays it up. Hernandez attacking. The keeper coming out, and she will get there first as Brisa Medina is going to get there and cover it up. As Hernandez was racing to try to get her second goal of the evening. Buller Bears quickly into the zone as Mangok. Adar Mangok, three goals and assist on the season. Seven goals a year ago for the Polar Bears. The Bobcats and the Polar Bears have not met since 2018 when the Bobcats defeated the Polar Bears 3-2 as the Bobcats are 3-0 against Des Moines North since 2012. Deanna Hernandez-Carranza will take the throw in. I had a touch right there, the legal touch. Not sure if it was a handball or what it might have been, but it'll be Bobcat possession here. Sarah Huffman looking near side. She'll pass to Carranza. And on the wing, Gomez Reyes has it poked away. She'll take the immediate throw in. Back to Coleman. And that one poked out again. Hernandez Carranza with that throw in. Well, the Bears won it away. Almost a handball there by Kenya Gomez Reyes. And she'll keep it in play as that was out on North to throw in. Carranza throws in upfield. Alexia Garcia cross her towards the middle, looking for Coleman, cut off. And now misplayed by North. Back to the Bobcats. See the bench there for the Polar Bears. Everybody bundled up on a chilly evening. 46 degrees here at Mediacom Stadium. Those winds still whipping pretty good out of the northwest. And 15 with gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. Gonzalez into the Bobcat zone but cut off. Millie Heitman up to Coleman. Coleman has it taken away. Haley Weinheimer, who just checked out a moment ago, she's back in. She had a momentary touch right there for the Polar Bears. Huffman up to Gomez Reyes. Looking for Sanchez cut off. Paw kicks it right into Tejada. I don't, I can't remember Tejada coming out of this match on that defensive line. Nor Huffman. As they both played well. Bobcat defenders, good job right there. Huffman got in the mix of things. December Paw, though, that one deflected. Pushed out of the box. Paw will get it back. That's got to be cut off. And a low line drive by Paw. A skimmer on the ground. Chavez already there with the save.
Just under 12 minutes to go before halftime here at Mediacom Stadium. Bobcats played up towards the penalty box, but Sanchez not, not going to get there in time as the pass from Hernandez just too strong. Huffman gives chase. And boy, great job by her to box out the defender who is tracking on her. Good pass up to Millie Heitman. But it has it taken away by the Polar Bears. Now cut off. Coleman is checked back in for the Bobcats. She's looking for Sanchez. Sanchez runs up. But the Polar Bears are going to be their first to take it away. A deflection back to the Bobcats. Gomez Reyes up to Sanchez. Back to Gomez Reyes. Oh, the pass just a little bit off the mark. That could have been a great opportunity for a look at a goal right there, but the pass just a touch behind. And out on the Bobcats in Tejada. Two on our score as the Bobcats goals tonight by Yuri Ramirez as well as Giselle Hernandez. Looks like we will have Yuri Ramirez checking back in here momentarily. Deflected a throw in again by Sala. And Sala looks toward the middle. Deflected. And North was the first to get there, but deflected. And back to the Bobcats. A trip from behind. That's going to be a penalty and a kick for the Bobcats. Boy, that was nearly a great opportunity for a breakaway for the Bobcats. And it is going to result in a yellow card. And a good call by the official right there as Magali Neighbor committed the penalty, picks up the yellow card as she checks out. Is that just a blatant trip from behind on Giselle Hernandez, which results in the yellow card? Almost resulted in uh, taking away a scoring opportunity, but still not in the attacking zone. That would definitely be a tough call to make. But the official marking it in his notebook, and we are good to go with the first penalty of the evening. A high kick to Sanchez. Coleman cuts it off, and a penalty going to be called on the Polar Bears. A quick play right there as it's spotted down. And the head official is actually going to stop. It looked like the Bobcats wanted to get going there quickly, but they will set up here on the free kick by Sarah Huffman. Bobcats littered on the penalty line. A miss right there initially and a bump as Georgia Jansen commits a penalty and that will result in the possession back to the Polar Bears. Free kick away. That's our first header as December Paw. I don't think too many headers in this cold of weather you want to take. That's a little better during the warm season. Good play, Yuri Ramirez. Back to Sanchez as Sanchez fed her initially. Polar Bears cut it off, but now getting into the deeper into the zone on the wing. Gomez Reyes looking for a crosser to Sanchez. That one deflected. Sanchez tries to kick it. It's back near the goalkeeper zone, and Bobcats keep it into the penalty box here as they're in the deep end. Yuri Ramirez just misses outside as she took a big strike from outside the penalty box. And that will be a goal kick, but really good aggressiveness right there by the Bobcat ladies. 
putting a shot on goal right there. As you see Ramirez from the point right there. Good strike. Trying to bend it a little bit right there. Goal kick away. Bomb can't almost cut it off. Gomez Reyes. Play from Hernandez Carranza. Looking to Sanchez, but the Polar Bears able to deflect it away. Yuri Ramirez gathers it back in. Up to Hernandez. Hernandez looking on the wing. Now looking for a crosser potentially, but the Polar Bears cut off Natalie Andrade, who just checked in, and it looked like she might have rolled her left ankle. And she gets up and she is okay as she deflected that one out on the far sideline. And a throw in for the Polar Bears. Six and a half minutes to go until halftime here at Mediacom Stadium. Coleman cuts it off. As the Polar Bears win it back now, there's a lot of passing but not going really anywhere right there for the Polar Bears. Now Weinheimer upfield. This pass goes somewhere. Catch the defensive napping. A good counterattack, but it's cut off as Adar Mangak. Not able to do anything with that possession, but it will be a corner kick. Two one Bobcats leading late in this first half. And Yuri or excuse me, Esme Chavez with a save as a strike from at the top of the penalty box is saved. I believe that came in by Haley Weinheimer. She was looking for her fourth goal of the season. But Esme Chavez with a beautiful save for the Bobcats in on the counter. Coleman upfield off to the far side to Hernandez. She's trying to track it down, but it could be well out of play. And now it is kicked out of play by the Polar Bears as they'll reset defensively. Carol Ramirez is going to check back in. And good opportunity right there was actually Haley McCarl who scored the goal earlier in this match, 15 minutes into it for the Polar Bears. And she was trying for her second goal of the match, but really good save by Esme Chavez as we looked at that replay right there. Far side throw in for the Bobcats. As that throw-in from Georgia Jansen was cut off. Georgia Jansen cuts it back off and wins it back. But I believe we might have had a ball out of play right there. And so it's going to be awarded to the Polar Bears on a throw-in. Huffman kicks it towards midfield. Yuri Ramirez dumps it into the zone right there. In the attacking zone for the Bobcats. Gomez Reyes deep into the corner. A nice play past the defender. Now a header missed on. Coleman tracks but not able to get there is Barisa Medina. The keeper will cover it up before Coleman can put a foot on it. Polar Bears with the throw in. We have a quick substitution for the Polar Bears as checking out of the match, Nadia Powell. 
The throw in by Sala. Upfield now. Georgia Jansen will let Chavez come out and field that one, and the Bobcats will fall back. Yuri Ramirez looks near side. Gomez Reyes. Carranza has it taken away. Over towards midfield. Play back and just a touch strong on that touch as Haley Weinheimer was looking to connect with Adar Mangok, who has three goals on the season, 70 a year ago, as we mentioned earlier. But just a touch strong on that one. And the Bobcats have possession back with two minutes to go before halftime. Huffman upfield to Gomez Reyes. She gets past a polar bear. A little bit of an avenue straight up, but the polar bears cut it off. But the Bobcats win it right back. A couple of passes just off the mark as the Bobcats, maybe with these windy conditions going into the wind on these attacks, balls seem to be just a touch behind, so that could be playing into a little bit of hit here as Georgia Jansen wins the ball back for the Bobcats. Staying alive on that far sideline goes to Coleman. Coleman plays it towards the box. Looking to track it down, but the Polar Bears have it. And they will... thought they were going to have that one sneak out, but it will not. And it does go back towards Yuri Ramirez. Midfield, she's going to step in and poke down of there by the Polar Bears. Crosser. And Sanchez is there, but misplays it on the touch and not able to score a goal. Excuse me, Alexia Garcia, not Sanchez. So Alexia Garcia, close call right there. Maybe a, a last-second goal before halftime, but not able to increase the advantage here tonight for the Bobcats, leading 2-1. to one. Good performance, though. Very aggressive performance by Stacey Galima's squad here tonight on the road in their first conference matchup in the Iowa Alliance tonight. Final seconds counting down in this first half. Bobcats trying to get the ball out of their zone, uh, out of the defensive zone. And a ball deflected over the far side, Opry Tahada. The wind kind of kept that one in play, but a good job by Huffman to box out the attacker. And that will end this first half of action. As Huffman did a nice job, defense has been strong tonight for the Bobcats. Esme Chavez did cede one goal to the Polar Bears in Haley McCarl 15 minutes into this one, but it was the Bobcats who had Yuri Ramirez striking four minutes into this one. Even the Bobcats a 1-0 lead. They take a 2-1 lead to the midway break. We'll step aside for a moment. We'll recap the first half when we come back to Mediacom Stadium. It's Bobcats 2, Polar Bears 1 on KFJB TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodeling. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Rainbow Car Wash has been in town over 40 years. New owners Brett and Kim Canada have been with Rainbow for more than 35 years, focusing on quality, cleanliness, and great customer service. Open 24 hours year-round with two convenient locations. Each location has two oversized truck bays to accommodate large vehicles, all bays except quarters. And for your convenience, newly installed credit, debit, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay featuring Swiper Tap to Pay, powerful vacuums, and a great selection of vending supplies. Follow us on Facebook at Rainbow Car Wash, LLC. We are at halftime. It is Bobcat Match Day here on KFJB TV. Bobcats with a 2 1 lead in that first half of action. Got off to a very nice start to take a 1 0 lead as Yuri Ramirez, just four minutes into the match, 
was able to take and get a goal right here on what looked to be possibly a crosser, but on the backside, nobody was there and didn't need to be anybody there as she was able to score that one for the Bobcats. Then, 11 minutes later, Haley McCarl strikes back for the Polar Bears to tie things up at 1-1 apiece. And she struck from way out on the edge of the penalty box and diving was Esme Chavez. Good attempt. Chavez played a really nice first half for the Bobcats, but that was the lone goal she did see it here tonight. And then 17 minutes in, so just a few minutes later, Bobcats were able to get back the lead and go up 2-1 and getting her first goal of the season, striking Giselle Hernandez as she scored a goal on uh, three goals last year, but that was her first goal of the season. And that's where we stand, 2-1 at the midway break. This is Bobcat Soccer. You're watching KFJB TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, lennoxecu.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Thank you. 
it is a 2-1 to one lead at the break as we just get ready to go for the second half. Maybe a little bit early. These ladies probably a little chilly wanting to get going again. The Bobcats with a couple of goals. Yuri Ramirez, Giselle Hernandez scored in that first half as the Bobcats got the kickoff to begin this match as the Polar Bears will control possession for the second half as Haley Weinheimer put a shot on goal in that first half, but uh, she was not able to pick anything up. Haley McCarl did score score the only goal of the night for the Bobcat, or excuse me, the Polar Bear Ladies. The Polar Bears trying to get into the attacking zone quickly, but Chavez will come out, come out and cover that one up. And she'll kick out to midfield. And these kicks probably going to go a little bit longer than they did in that first half as the Bobcats will now have the wind at their back to begin the second half. We've only lost a couple of degrees since kickoff tonight as we're at 44, but uh, definitely with that wind, very chilly night here at Mediacom Stadium. I'm Brandon Lewis. Thanks for joining us tonight. Our camera crew definitely uh, bracing the impacts of the spring-like weather, I guess you could say, here tonight. Jesse DeMeyer on our main cam. Keith Stewart's on the field, roaming the sidelines. Todd Steinkamp, our producer. Throwing on the far side for the Polar Bears. Mangok had it for a second. December Paw has it back. And now Weinheimer back towards the middle. And the Bobcat defense trying to push that ball out of there. But Mangok doing a good job to try to keep attacking. She'll cross. Solid was the last to touch that one for North. Throw in quickly by Carranza. Kicked out on the Polar Bears. Throw in for the Bobcats. I think I see one of the ball girls down there with snow pants on. Don't blame her here tonight. Yuri Ramirez back to Carranza. Matt now back towards the middle. And a ball slips through. Coleman has it. One touch, but it's going to be off the mark as she runs into the keeper. And that is going to be... I believe ruled a penalty. And the trainers are going to be summoned out here as Coleman hit the turf on that one. Coleman takes the shot, and oh, boy. Looked like she got her right ankle pretty good there. And she collided with Medina, the keeper. Coleman looking at that right ankle, I believe, down there as Stacia Kalima, head coach, comes out. Coleman's attempt at that shot off the mark as it slipped off the right side of the goal. And I think a goal kick is, I'm not sure if it was touched, so I'm not sure if they're going to award a corner kick right there as we look at the replay, but definitely a tough collision right there between Coleman and it was on the attack in Medina. Both players being checked out here. And with an injury timeout, we will step aside. It's 2-1 to one Bobcats leading the Polar Bears on KFJB-TV.
Well, a penalty kick is going to be awarded here off that play as Sarah Huffman will be the one to take it as McKenna Coleman is going to hobble to the sideline. The unfortunate ending to her night, but uh, definitely a uh, bad collision right there between the keeper in Esme Chavez, or excuse me, uh, Barisa Medin, uh, Medina and McKenna Coleman. We do have a new keeper into the match. Ariam Sala is the new goalkeeper, and she was back on the defensive line. So Huffman to take. She does have one goal on the season. A penalty kick right here for the Bobcats to go up 3-1. The senior in a pivotal moment here early on in the second half as we are just nearly three minutes into the second half of action tonight. Another substitution as Natasha Smith will check in. I believe on the defensive line she's going to check in because of Sala going back to goal. Keep. Upman waiting around, trying to stay warm with those legs, waiting for the official to give the signal, and he will. Upman, the senior, with the penalty kick. Upman goes right and scores. It's 3-1 Bobcats. Two and a half minutes into the second half. After an injury to McKenna Coleman, a penalty kick awarded. And the senior in Huffman takes it and she converts. 3-1 Bobcats. Kind of looked like she was deking her out just a little bit right there. Looking to go to her left, but Sala was eyeing that way and got beat back to the other side. So Sarah Huffman, her second goal of the season for the Bobcats. And now a penalty. It'd be polar pair ball. And a free kick. From just outside the penalty area. And Adar Mangok with three goals already on the season. She's going to take this free kick. Gantz will build a little bit of a wall, but also enough of a view for Esme Chavez to come up with a save. Mangonk takes it, and it is way strong. Sails over the net, and Bob Katz will have the goal kick. Huffman's going to take the goal kick for Esme Chavez. Huffman out to Yuri Ramirez, turns around, looking towards midfield, but cut off by December Paw, and back to Yuri R Ramirez. Goes uh, far side, but that one's going to sail out of play on the sideline. Angok, and she just out of her reach as she was looking for her fourth goal of the season. Not able to control. Ball in the possession. And it looks like they're actually going to say that was out on the Bobcats. I, did, I thought Mangok was... Touching that the whole way, maybe she was just in close proximity guarding that one. 
but it will be a corner kick by December Paw on the far side. Paw's kick into the penalty area, and Capayu will clear it. And up to Hernandez. Hernandez turns around and nobody home. Polar Bears. Kick it away, though, as Gomez Reyes had it back for the Bobcats. She has it back again, and she'll push it upfield. A deflection, and almost touched, but offside on the Bobcats. Kenya Gomez Reyes on the near side. Back to the Polar Bears. Free kick away. Side kick by Gomez Reyes. That one up into the wind. Headed forward, and now Capayu. Almost able to cut it off right there, but the Polar Bears win back. As McCarl, already a goal to her name here tonight, she'll tack into the zone. Looking for a crosser. Bobcats can't get that ball out of their own, out on the end line, and it's going to be a corner for the Polar Bears. As December Paw will take this one. December Paw with the corner kick and the box. Turn around and a shot, but that one not on goal. Weinheimer took it. Chavez runs it out, and the long kick up towards midfield. Hernandez plays it off the foot. Misplayed, but gathers it back in. Win maybe kind of helped push it back towards her a little bit. Looking far side on the wing, but cut off. The avenue not there. Yuri Ramirez, though, able to win it back for the Bobcats. She'll come out to the near side. And the Bobcats have the pass cut off, intended for Carranza. And out on the sideline, going to be Polar Bear possession. Substitution for the Marshalltown Bobcats, number 15, Stefani Gutierrez. And for your Bobcats have it taken back as Lamagna with a nice move. Back to December. Paw kicks it in, and it's right off of Carranza. Bobcats will get it up towards midfield. Alexia Garcia, the intended target. Back to December. Paw. Paw is able to touch it up to Lamagna. Lamagna crosser, which is deflected out of there. Good play by Huffman, who just scored a goal for the Bobcats. Bobcats maybe not quite as disciplined here in the second half as they were in the first half. But also I have to say that uh, North a little more aggressive on their side of things, knowing they're down in a 3-1 deficit. In the second half, with only 31 minutes remaining in this match. Chavez with that stop, a drop kick up towards midfield. The wind will propel this one all the way over midfield and out on the far sideline. Quick throw in taken. And Capayu gathers the deflection for a moment. And the Bobcats will come up with it. Up to Sanchez. She's going to have to track quite a ways. And a stop by Sala. Sala will kick this one. Far side. North miss plays. And back to the Bobcats, a throw in. Sidney Capayu will take it. 
But before that happens, substitutions. Georgia Jansen, as well as Ilya Christian, is into the match. Checking out Deanna Hernandez Carranza, as well Iris Benrostro. AC Galima, head coach, giving a five to her players right there as they check out. 3-1, Bobcats leading under 30 minutes to go. As the Bobcats, with a win here tonight, would improve to 3-1 and one and move to 1-0 in the Iowa Alliance Conference. Bobcats in the zone, a deep shot taken there from way out. Carol Gomez-Reyes, aggressive, but... Not the cleanest of looks, and that will not be a shot on goal right there. Genesis Trujillo Lopez. Late to check on here. She's going to scramble on for the Polar Bears. Also just checking in was Natasha Smith for the Polar Bears. And the goal kick is cut off by the Bobcats. Nearly a trip right there, but the Bobcats get it back. Gomez Reyes looking, looking. And a pass to the wing on the near side to Kenya. Gomez Reyes was cut off. Capeu on the far side. Actually, excuse me, no, that was not Capeu on the far side. I believe that was actually Lilia Christian who just checked in for the Bobcats. Free kick for the Polar Bears. Immediately cut off. Scrambling is Steph uh, Stephanie Gutierrez. Now Capeu. That one slips past the defender, but it will go out of play as tracking was Lilia Christian. They not able to get on the same page for that pass right there. Ailey McCarl's back into the match. Two goals coming into this one. Another goal to her name tonight. She has three on the season. She'll replace Haley Weinheimer, the freshman. Out on the far sideline. Throw in for the Bobcats. Huffman on that defensive back line. Had it. Passes up to Gomez Reyes, but it was cut off. And now a counterattack. Mangok towards the middle. Huffman cuts it off. Polar Bears win it right back, though, is Slamanya. And now George Jansen's had enough. Boots this one up towards midfield. Gutierrez with a touch, but loses it out. A throw in for North. Three-one Bobcats up on the Marshalltown High V scoreboard. Cats with goals by Sarah Huffman here in the second half off of a penalty kick. As McKenna Coleman went out with injury after a collision with the keeper in Medina. Medina also the starting keeper. Tonight for the North Polar Bears, she is out. Giselle Hernandez, Yuri Ramirez scoring first half goals for the Bobcats. Bobcats almost stole away the throw in for the Polar Bears, but out on the Bobcats, Polar Bears with the throw in. Looking for December Paw. It was cut off there by the Bobcats. Capeu on the far side. A shot on goal. Not a strong one. Esme Chavez with a clean safe. And she'll drop kick this one away up into the 
Windy. Mediacom Stadium Air here tonight. Alexia Garcia plays it up on the wing. Gomez Reyes tracking it down, but Polar Bears have it. Kick to the near side. Almost lost, deflected, throw in, Polar Bears. Gomez Reyes stepped in the way of that pass. And out on the sideline, and a substitution. Deanna Hernandez Carranza, we saw her momentarily there on that shot at the side. She'll check in as Sydney Capayu will check out. Capayu limping a little bit, I know, during basketball season, battling uh, some ankle and knee issues as she's wearing that brace, but. Great effort tonight on that defensive line. Throw in for the Bobcats. Georgia Jansen will take it. Good look there for Garcia, but she had a touch and then it was poked away. But the Bobcats win it back here as Huffman stepped up on the defensive line. Gomez Reyes over to Carol Gomez Reyes. Now back of the wing, crosser, up into the wind, backside, nobody able to get there in time, and we were going to have an offside anyway as Lilia, uh, Lilia Christian was tracking that one down, but nevertheless an offside and a goal kick for the Polar Bears with 23 minutes remaining in their second half. As didn't quite see who might have been offside. It might have been uh, Lilia Christian just before that all happened, but nevertheless, good crosser, but... Nothing pays off for the Bobcats. On the goal kick, deflected. Sanchez, or excuse me, Alexia Garcia, was able to mix things up, and this will force the Polar Bears to kick it out on the end line, a corner kick for the Bobcats. Now it'll be good to see if the Bobcats can add to their aura at a 3-1 lead here in the second half and continue to take advantage as Kenya Gomez-Reyes with the corner. Deflected around. Polar Bears can't get to it. Back out. Crosser. Into the box. Deflected there. Garcia got a touch on it, but the Polar Bears are able to poke it away. Georgia Jansen steps in, deflects it off the Polar Bears, but uh, they will say it is with the pink of Des Moines North. Bunch of new faces getting ready to check into this match. Alicia Zambrano, Giselle Hernandez, and also Janice Telez getting ready to check in. North catches a deflection, but Yuri Ramirez will poke it out of play on the near sideline to cut down the avenue right there. Georgia Jansen almost caught that throw in. Now Huffman will kick it off out on the near side as December Paw had it taken away. Now the throw in is right to Huffman. Up to Georgia Jansen. Jansen had her pass deflected, and now this one goes towards the middle. Espinoza had it for a second for North. Played up to Garcia, and Garcia just behind it. Long run for Gutierrez. She was trying to track it down, but a penalty going to be issued on Gutierrez. And a free kick for the Polar Bears. Well, 20 minutes gone in this second half, and Bobcats just with the lone goal of the second half, a penalty kick by Sarah Huffman, just three minutes in. So 
Looks like another penalty on the Bobcats. A free kick going to come here for the Polar Bears. Bobcats pretty far back here on this free kick, considering... Uh, a kick by December Paul into the wind, and Esme Chavez comes out and the clean save, and she'll boot this one away back towards midfield. A long run by Gutierrez. She's going to track it down on the far side wing. Plays it up to Gomez Reyes. Reyes looking for potentially a crosser. She'll play it in. High kick by Garcia. Tries to bring it down, but it's deflected far enough that the North Polar Bears can get it. December Paul plays it back out. Georgia Jansen, though, keeps it in the zone. In the attacking zone, Bobcats trying to get their fourth goal of the night. Yuri Ramirez wins it back. Cut off, though, by Weinheimer. And Tejada is going to cut it off, but Weinheimer sticks with it, plays it, gets it near the box, looking for a crosser towards the middle. It's deflected. Georgia Jansen with a great defensive save. And she'll get it out of the penalty area. Near danger for the Bobcats. Paw, though, plays it in. Dive off the crossbar. Huge play. And the Bobcats say they've had enough. They'll play it out on the end line. It'll be a corner kick. But scramble mode for the Bobcats right there is Georgia Jansen with a beautiful save. And then a shot on goal off the crossbar by Paw, as you see right here on KFJB TV. Just deflected enough by Esme Chavez that that was not able to sneak in for a goal. What a great shot right there. And it will be a corner kick by Paw on the far side as we have a few of those substitutions. Tejada checking out. Can you Gomez Reyes? as well as Carol Gomez-Reyes, both out for the Bobcats now. Good minutes for all three of those ladies. Crosser in. Georgia Jansen poked that one away. It's out just outside the penalty area. A shot in off the left foot. Came in from Haley McCarroll, who already had a goal to her name here tonight. Chavez with a clean save, and she kicks it towards midfield. The near side wing by Janess Telez, and she has it poked away. Telez tries to win it back, and momentarily she does, but kicked out on uh, the Polar Bears. Quick play. Quickly going is Alexi Garcia, who seems to never run out of energy here tonight. She had one of those tracking meters. She'd probably already be up to five, six miles at least. Quick throw in for the Bobcats. A deflection over the wing. It'll be another throw in as taking it is Telez. Telez has it. Looking over for Garcia, but deflected by the Polar Bears. And I believe that was deflected. So, yes, it will be Bobcat throw-in to Les. Another substitution. Millie Heitman is into the match. And she checks in for Alexia Garcia. Huffman misplays. Tried to settle the ball, but could not do so. She's going to scramble back. Nearly made the stop at a penalty as she was tripped up from behind by Haley McCarrow. And a free kick for the Bobcats with just 15 minutes to go. Good hustle there by Huffman. Got in position and then bumped off the ball. And that penalty awarded. I think for the backside, probably looked worse than what it really was. Might have not been a penalty right there, but nevertheless, the Bobcats will take it. Huffman's kick is out and a throw-in for the Polar Bears.
McCarl plays it towards the middle. And coming out, Chavez with a stop. Tripped up Weinheimer. But a really good save by Chavez to come out of the box. That's so key sometimes. Goalie has to help themselves out in those situations where a pass kind of sneaks by where maybe you think the defender's going to make the stop. And to come out, good play right there for the Bobcats. Yuri Ramirez. Ball deflected. She was looking for Millie Heitman. And nothing there. And Sala makes a stop. But a good job right there, as you see on the replay. Esme Chavez coming out <laughs> and getting the stop. Trying to keep a clean sheet here in the second half. A lot of play on the far sideline. Bobcats will throw in. Targeting Gutierrez. Lost it. Gathers it back. Looking towards the middle. Heitman with a touch. Yuri Ramirez. All taken away from behind. Ramirez kicks it over the near side. I think she thought she kicked it harder than that. Gave up and then tried to track it back down again, but it will be a throw in for the Polar Bears. Ramirez takes away the throw in. Kicks it upfield off the Polar Bears and a throw in back for the Bobcats. Telez to throw in. And the official will stop play as a substitution was there as Bryn, Res uh, Bryn, excuse me, Bryn Resordo is checking back into the match. So Bryn Rostro back into the match. The throw-in deflected out. Three more ready to check back in for the Bobcats. Another throw-in. This one deflected again. It goes into the stands. Catches the wind off the foot of Zambrano. The throw in is out of bounds. Natasha Smith, the focus for the Polar Bears as they've gotten themselves in a two goal, goal hole right here is. Kind of fell off here in the second half on a chilly night at Mediacom Stadium. I'm Brandon Lewis. Thanks for joining us on KFJB TV. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to get upcoming game alerts. Our next soccer match coming on Friday night as the Bobcat boys will be on KFJB TV as they take on the Fort Dodge Dodgers. Look forward to having you along for that one. Coverage starts at 7.15 on Friday night, 7.30 from Leonard Cole Field and Marshalltown High School. And now the substitutions run onto the field. Aubrey Tejada is back into the match, as well as Natalie Andrade. And also checking back in, uh, Sofia Valdez for the Bobcats. Got a little action last night against Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Back in goal, she had three saves, did not allow a goal. And a good job against Gladbrook Rhinebeck. Bobcats coming off a game last night. So 80 minutes last night, 80 minutes tonight. But still looking fresh here in the second half, especially Yuri Ramirez. Boy, she does a really nice job in that midfield role. She launches this one into the stance on the near side, shutting down an attack by the Polar Bears. And, yeah, scramble drill to find a new ball right there as a couple balls been launched into the uh, stand recently. And back into this match, Alexia Garcia. One goal on the season. Has not scored tonight, but, boy, she a lot of good minutes. Just like Yuri Ramirez, who's checking out as well. She's given a lot of really good playing time tonight. 70 minutes gone here tonight, 10 to go at Mediacom Stadium. 10 minutes is all that stands between the Bobcats and their third victory of the season. A good bounce-back effort here tonight 
after a dreary loss last night on the road at Gladbrook Rhinebeck, two to nothing. I'm sure they're thinking, yes, it's cold tonight, but it was cold and rainy, so we'll, we'll take just a windy night. After last night, Georgia Jansen lost it. Gonzalez has it for North, pokes it into the box, down to a knee and a save for Chavez. Up to midfield, Bob Katz, poke it, up to Millie Heitman, and Heitman has it taken away. Off the back right there of Hernandez, Polar Bears have it. Georgia Jansen on that defensive line was able to stop that ball from being played even further in. Weinheimer out of control. Keeps it in play, but the Bobcats back with the possession. Tejada launches it forward. Up on the wing, Bobcats pass was deflected by Gerardo. Gerardo, excuse me. Bobcats on the counter. Open on the near side wing over here, but did not see Telez. Paw. Looked upfield for McCarl, but the pass was taken away momentarily. And now this one pushed out of play by Zambrano. Georgia Jansen with a kick against McCarl. That one went off her hard and make sure she is all right. Throw in by Zambrano for the Bobcats. Alexia Garcia, the intended target on the throw in right there, but it was deflected out. Back with the Bobcats. Telez will throw in. Back to Alexia Garcia on the throw in. Back to Telez. Little two-woman game right there on the wing. They pass it up to Millie Heitman. Heitman has it taken away. But now back for the Bobcats, Telez. Alexia Garcia looking for a long pass. And that one can't sneak through. Cut off. Playing upfield as Andrade will track it down, but she's beat out. Weinheimer, the freshman, charging. She has three goals to her name on this season. Tejada tries to cut her off. Weinheimer gets past, a shot taken, and she sneaks it past Esme Chavez as Weinheimer, her fourth goal of the season. It's 3-2, and desperation now for the Bobcats to hold on for a victory with just 7.23 to go. Weinheimer just got past. It was a good move to get past Tejada. She just could not stop her. She's got a tall, lanky body, the freshman, and able to just kind of box out Tejada to get the goal. That's the Polar Bears goal in the 73rd minute. Number two, Haley Weinheimer. So that one comes at the 71st minute of this match here. And a big one for North. Bobcats back into the attacking zone over towards the midfield. A shot played in, but that not able to get anything on it there for Hernandez. A little more urgency for the Bobcats to close this one out. Six and a half minutes to go. Seventy third minute. I think it said seventy first minute, but seventy third minute of this match, where that second goal of the game and a yellow card going to be issued on the Bobcats, Giselle Hernandez. And pretty good collision there with Paw. Sent her to the turf. And after picking up the yellow card, Giselle Hernandez will check out. Substitutions for the Marshalltown Bobcats number two, Romero. 
the head referee marking that one in his notebook and a substitution at the same point in time. Genesis Trujillo Lopez into the match as she'll replace Natasha Smith for the Polar Bears. So 74 minutes into this one, and the Bobcats just trying to get to 80 and get the victory here. Up to Millie Heitman. Ball deflected just out of her reach. Telez cuts it off. Garcia had it for a moment. Yuri Ramirez has checked back in for the Bobcats. To Telez, but she's cut off. And the Polar Bears push it over into the corner. And that one's going to sneak on the other side of the flag. It's going to be a throw in. Wow. Nearly a corner kick, but a throw in now for the Bobcats. Good defensive hustle right there for the Polar Bears. Throw into Garcia. Now Telez gets it back. And she got it to Heitman, but a quick kick, and it's off the mark. Well, outside of the net. Substitution. Sarah Huffman's going to be back into the match. And she will replace Natalie Andrade, who has checked in just a moment ago. Sala takes the goal kick. And it looks like the Bobcats are going to win the ball back here. When Rostro just a little more aggressive right there to win the ball back. A throw in deflected. She gets it. When Rostro gets it back, she'll take a long kick. And that one almost out of Mediacom Stadium on that back end line. And a goal kick to come here for Sala. Deflected. Bombcats almost got it into the penalty area, but North cut it off. Mangok has scored three goals on this season. Huffman pushed by her, but cuts it off. And yeah, the Bombcats will play it out on the far sideline, just shutting down that attack so they can get reset defensively. Mangok is a threat. Seven goals a year ago for the senior. So the Bombcats knowing that. Do not want to see it another goal late here and risk giving up a victory. Heitman tracks down a long pass that was way strong. And that's going to be a goal kick as Heitman deflected that one out on the end line. So three minutes to go. Substitution Natasha Smith is back into the match. Re-entering the gate now for your North Polar Bears. Put your hands together for number 23. It's Natasha Smith. Smith replaces Estefani Gerardo. Gerardo, excuse me, not Gerardo. To less challenges, Yuri Ramirez as well on December Paw, but Polar Bears push through, and now the defensive line cuts it off to Les. Zambrano got beat up the wing on the near side. McCarl, she has already scored here tonight. Puts it in to Esme Chavez, and she covers it up. Boy, two and a half minutes to go. 78 minutes gone here tonight at Mediacom Stadium. Bobcats finally trying to hold on for the last two. That's going to be a handball up by midfield by North. Play has not stopped. The, near, uh, the AR on the near side, the assistant referee, had his flag up. But it definitely looked like it was a handball right there by 4-4. A good pass up. Valdez will track it down. 
4-4 was in her face. She passes it back, and that will be out. It will be Polar Bear ball. And a throw in on the far side. Georgia Jansen launches that one out. Maybe a little bit of stalling going on for the Bobcats here, just trying to secure a victory on the road. And a throw in. Deflected again. Tejada pushes it out. And actually, no, they say it was last touch by Polar Bears. Back to Huffman. Huffman back to the keeper and Chavez. Chavez will boot it up to Georgia Jansen. And that one just a touch strong. It'll be a throw in for North with 30 seconds to go. Georgia Jansen cuts it off. Valdez had it taken away. December Paw hits the turf, gets back up, gathers her footing. Maybe a last second counter here to try to tie up with the Bobcat defensive line. Pushes that one out on the sideline. As the final seconds count down, the Bobcats going to go to 3 and 1 on the season as the Polar Bears will drop to 1 and 1. And a good victory on the road here tonight. Bobcats had to hold on. 73rd minute, Haley Weinheimer put one in and made things tight here at the end. But a good job by Esme Chavez and the rest of the Bobcat ladies to record the victory here tonight on the road to take down the Des Moines North Polar Bears. Bobcats are now 4-0 against Des Moines North since 2012. And so a 3-2 victory here tonight. We'll go over our scoring summary and take a look at what's next and also try to chat with head coach Stacy Galima. 3-2 as we look at the teams. I'll shake hands to recap this one here tonight as both these teams with their first Iowa Lions Conference match of the season as this is the second match of the season for the Polar Bears as the Bobcats... Three and one. They were seven and ten a year ago and looking to take a step forward here in the 2024 season. Once again, a final, the Bobcats 3 2. We end the locker room report. That's coming up next. This is Bobcat Soccer. You're watching KFJB TV. Here's a pop up the right field. Got a bounty. Has it dives to her left and makes a huge win here at the roundhouse. A late play over to first, and they got him just in time. And a safe. Ignacio Macias, hey, hi, Mom. There we go. There's a uh, shot of the elevator as Keith is uh, looking for a little bit of reprieve on a chilly night here at Mediacom Stadium. Welcome back in to our coverage tonight on KFJB TV. Once again, a final 3-2 to two as the Bobcats take down the Des Moines North Polar Bears. Bobcats are now 3-1 and one on the season as the Polar Bears drop to 1-1 one and one with the victory here tonight for the Bobcats. Like I mentioned, they're 4-0 and oh against North since 2012. Bobcats got the scoring started early on tonight, just four minutes into this match. Yuri Ramirez put in a goal crosser that ended up going in right over the keeper in Medina and the Bobcats took that lead one to nothing. North would answer back though 11 minutes later as Haley McCarl would put this goal in right here and she was able to sneak around a Bobcat defender and power it past Chavez to tie things up at one apiece but just two minutes later Giselle Hernandez she was able to pick up her first goal of the season for the Bobcats 
as the Bobcats let it slide through, and she was able to power one past Brisa Medina. And that's where we stood at halftime. 2-1 was our score. Both teams scored here in the second half. The Bobcats in the 43, 43rd minute, yeah, just three minutes into the second half, a penalty kick by Sarah Huffman made it 3-1 after a penalty was issued on Medina, the keeper. She came out for a save but tackled McKenna Coleman, who injured her ankle, both players did not play the rest of the match. So that would be it for nearly 30 minutes in the second half. And at the 73rd minute, Haley Weinheimer picked up her fourth goal of the season. And she just beat out the Bobcat defensive line. Tejada not able to cut her off. And that would make it 3-2. to two. The Bobcats were able to hang on for the final seven minutes of this match and record their first conference win of the season. Mini Comp Stadium, our host here tonight, will be covering the Bobcat boys on Friday night. We'll tell you more about that coming up later in our locker room report. This is Bobcat Soccer. You're watching KFJB TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college. But medical school after graduation was a surprise. A happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Back hit on the locker room report tonight. The Bobcats take down the Polar Bears 3-2. to two. Our final is picking up goals. Ramirez, Hernandez, and Huffman for the Bobcats. We'll talk to Stacy Galima, head coach for the Marshalltown Bobcats, coming up in just a moment. Our next game coming up on Friday night. It is boys soccer as the boys will host Fort Dodge on Friday night at Leonard Cole Field as pregame coverage will start at 7.15 kickoff is at 7.30. Then on Monday night will be our next girls soccer match. Of course, you can catch all the games on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at KFJBTV. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Get upcoming match alerts. Also, uh, make, sure, make sure you uh, hit the uh, like button on Facebook, and you can also watch games at 1230kfjb.com. We'll take another time out, and when we come back, we will talk to Stacy Galima, head coach for the Marshalltown Bobcat Ladies, victorious tonight at Mediacom Stadium. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodels. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Rainbow Car Wash has been in town over 40 years. New owners Brad and Kim Canada have been with Rainbow for more than 35 years, focusing on quality, cleanliness, and great customer service. Open 24 hours year-round with two convenient locations. Each location has two oversized truck bays to accommodate large vehicles, all bays except quarters. And for your convenience, newly installed credit, debit, Apple Pay, and Samsung Pay featuring swipe or tap to pay, powerful vacuums, and a great selection of vending supplies. Follow us on Facebook at Rainbow Car Wash, LLC.
Well, welcome back into the Locker Room Report here on KFJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis, now joined by head coach Stacy Galima for the girls' squad. Boy, uh, final seven minutes, you had to be kind of sweating it out there in this one, didn't you? Yeah, um, I guess we always want to keep it interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> want to have those individual battles. So, <laughs> uh, A good performance here tonight. It, it seemed like that energy, especially coming off a, a loss at Gladbrook Ryan back last night, you really bounced back in this one. You struck early just four minutes into this match, got the first goal by Yuri Ramirez, and through the night, she didn't score any more. But, boy, I tell you what, she was passing and doing a good job tracking down some free balls and, and winning some extra possessions for you. So, I mean, just a great overall performance, though, team-wise, right? Yeah, um, I, I, they wanted to respond well after yesterday. They know we didn't play our best, so it was good to see them come out with energy from the very start. Um, we had a lot of players that were moving around, staying super active throughout the entire game, and, and that's what our team needs because that's how we connect passes and, and find those dangerous opportunities downfield. Yeah, Janelle, uh, Giselle Hernandez, she picked up her, her second goal of the season. What did you make of her performance here tonight? She kind of came in, or first goal of the season, I should say. She scored some goals last year, but first goal of the season for her, uh, able to get in. I mean, seems like substitutions in her role, very pivotal to, to kind of that second line, I guess you could say, of some of the players checking in yeah uh, we have a very deep bench um, our, our level doesn't drop off much with whoever you have on the field mm -hmm. uh, Giselle's been hurt the last few games she hasn't played she got hurt in the warm-ups uh, of the Newton game so it's great to see her go out there and find her opportunities and and you know she played a lot of significant minutes for us as the midfield and, and up top. Mm -hmm. Well, a few more minutes were added, especially in the second half because of McKenna Coleman's injury. Uh, the keeper came out and, and tried to make a stop, but they ran into each other. It looked like maybe she hurt a, an ankle or something. How's her health doing? Uh, not too bad. Um, they pretty much said it's just going to swell up. It's just going to be a bruise. Mm -hmm. They didn't think it was anything more serious than that, and hopefully she'll be back and ready to go for Friday. Was it an easy call for Sarah Huffman to come in and take that uh, penalty kick? Sarah will always play with confidence. So <laughs> <laughs> Definitely doesn't lack that. But, uh, boy, I tell you what, Haley Weinheimer, uh, she didn't give up on that play. Uh, seven minutes to go, she scored that goal. Uh, and, and then it seemed like your defense really stiffened up after that. Was that what you were kind of preaching, this, hey, you just got to play really good defense for the these final seven minutes tonight? Yeah, um, we, we try to give especially some of our underclassmen a little bit of those important roles. Uh, we moved Georgia from the outside to the inside. She's going to have to step up and play there next year, so it gives her some quality time playing there and getting that experience here. Um, there's times where we're unorganized, but that's the, the, the opportunities that we have to build upon as we go forward in the season. Well, 3-2 to two the final. Congrats on the victory. You're 3-1 and one on the season. That's got to be a good feeling, right? I never turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for the time, Stacy. Yeah, thank you very All much. All right. That is Stacy Galima, head coach for the girls, as they win here tonight on our uh, debut of our soccer coverage on KFJB TV. Their next match will come up on Monday on KFJB TV. We'll take one more final timeout as we'll wrap things up at Mediacom Stadium next, right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. Once again, the Bobcats victorious 3-2, to two, and the difference maker here tonight, Sarah Huffman with that final goal just three minutes into the second half as Huffman on the penalty kick was able to pound one right past the keeper who had to come in in an emergency situation in Sala. She was not able to get it, and a good goal right there, 3-2, to two, the final score. Thanks to our great crew here tonight on the scene at Mediacom Stadium in Des Moines. As on camera tonight, Keith Stewart as well as Jesse DeMeyer, our producer, Todd Steinkamp. I'm Brandon Lewis. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on KFJB-TV. We'll talk to you Friday night at Leonard Cole Field. 
Hopefully it will be a much warmer, less breezy night on Friday when the Bobcat boys roam the field at Leonard Cole Field. You've been watching Marshalltown Bobcat Athletics right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV.